Yankees and the Blue Jays battle of the AL East teams here. And uh, Jordan Montgomery is going for the Yankees today. Ross Stripling for the Blue Jays. The line in this one has the Yankees favored by 112. And the total in this game is 8.5, uh, shaded towards the under. 8.5 uh, at minus 115. Jeff, some thoughts on the Yankees and the Blue Jays as they go at it. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, – I, I kind of like the price. Obviously, the, the Yankees are always a very bet team. See this number kind of coming down a little bit. People are buying into Montgomery. But when you look at the number, it's come down. So that kind of ensures that maybe Toronto's the play here. Stripling, I, I like. I think his numbers are better than maybe the the, the incident numbers look like here. His X fits much better than his ERA, which uh, might assume that he's – been a little underrated. You look at Montgomery, I'm kind of banking on the fact that he's not going to continue the pitching the way he has to start the season. You look at through, you know what, four games, he's got an ERA under three. I don't think that's uh, something that's going to continue. And I'm sure that uh, Mark sees this. He has an XFIP at 4.23. So it kind of leads us to believe that his numbers aren't maybe as uh, good as maybe they're leading on. Um, I don't trust Montgomery. I've seen him pitch many times. Uh, gives up a lot of home runs and uh, has been quite shocking, frankly, in past years. Uh, I'm not interested in Jordan Montgomery. I think it's a pretty good price on Toronto. Uh, I'm going to back them here, uh, getting plus money at home. Mm -hmm. Mark? Yeah, you know, what's interesting about this game, TC, is is I, I kind of like both pitchers. Uh, I like Montgomery quite a bit, a uh, little bit better, probably about 11 points better. Uh, than Stripling. I have it priced at minus 172. And really the difference is uh, the bullpen rating here. I've got to, the way it sets up for Montgomery. I've got it at a 72. I really like this Yankees bullpen. And, and I think I've talked a couple times on the show. I don't remember. No, you do I, pretty much every day. Yeah, well, I, I don't. And, and the reason I do that, Jeff, is because I haven't seen this uh, a team with this deep of a bullpen in in. A lot, a long time, and so I'm really high on the, on the Yankees bullpen, and and so I have it priced accordingly. You know what's interesting about Stripling is that uh, over over his three starts this year, and you wouldn't think this, he's a 62 percentile against Oakland, he's an 87 percentile against Houston, and he's a 98 percentile against Boston. So you say, well, base winner, what about Jordan Montgomery? Well. He was a 72 percentile against Boston, a 61 percentile against Baltimore. But his last two starts have been really strong, 81 percentile versus Detroit. And then his last time out against Baltimore, an 89 percentile. And what I like about Montgomery is that since uh, August, this is since July 1st of last year. So he's had 19 starts. And in this three metric chart, he's ranked 22nd out of 210, uh, 210 pitchers. And while stripling, uh, not bad, but 60th out of 210. So I think that we get an edge in the starting pitching. I think we get a, a significant edge in the bullpen. Uh, offensively, I have it about right, but that's kind of how the price shakes out. You put it in the mixer, and I got it at minus 172. Mark, let me ask you something. Just to clarify for a lot of our viewers that may not be too familiar with a lot of your terminology, because he is our analytical sabermetrics guru. When you're mentioning the the 72nd percentile against a certain team for a pitcher explain what that actually means how you come up with that well it's a great question tc and i'm glad you asked it because what the, this is from my three metric chart so it basically takes it's fairly simple if you break it down it takes three metrics uh, that i think are very important uh, in in run suppression so the first metric it takes into account is swinging strike percentage and then i equate that to an expected strikeout percentage the next metric is hard hit per nine and then the final metric is balls divided by pitches. And so to me, this this gives me a really good idea what what kind of command the pitcher has. So what I do is I scale the uh, the expected strikeout percentage. Uh, so, for instance, there's 30, 3,100 starts that Major League Baseball starters have had since July 1st. And so if he has a 78 percentile, well, that means he's he's uh, in that particular metric in the 78th percentile uh, of 3,100 pitchers. So I guess roughly it would be, I don't know, where, where would he be, but about six, 700. So it's scaled to those to those starts, the number of starts. And in this case, and it usually is as I as the metrics, as the as the season goes on, I'll delete like, well, next week I'll have 
it'll be from July 8th. So you're going to get about 3,000 starts. So these metrics are all scaled to percentile. And then, so that gives me kind of an easy gauge when I look at it. I can say, well, last time out, based on these three metrics, he was in the 89th percentile, meaning that uh, only uh, 11% of starts were better than his uh, if you compare those 3,000 starts. Does that make sense, TC? Yeah, I, I, it does. But uh, when you're talking about against that team, is that the end result against that team? It's yeah. That's that's the uh, that's the the percentile based on the percentiles of the of the strikeout hard hit per nine. Yeah, because and when you're going past the last yeah. start, you were saying he was 78th percentile against Houston or 92 against the other team. So I just wondering. Right. No, actually- it takes it takes the um it takes an average of those of those. Basically, I mean, it, it's it's nothing you know, tremendously difficult. It's just a third, a third, a third. So it's it's a third, a third, a third. I take the average oh. of those percentiles and then compare it to those to those 3,100 starts to get that final percentile. Okay. Jeff, I hope you were taking notes over there. I, I don't know about you. I didn't do very good in algebra, geometry, uh, any, any of that stuff. I was a general math guy. So uh, hopefully, you know, you were taking notes and you're enlightened there, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, I almost fall asleep. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't post it. I'm here. It's a right. joke. Back to this game, guys. Uh, the Yankees have won nine in a row, a nine-game winning streak. Okay, That's something that I think we could all understand. We look at numbers here. And Toronto uh, has won two in a row, and they took the series from the Astros in a series over the weekend in Toronto that really had playoff feel with that. It's very, very exciting. Uh, so we'll see what happens when these two juggernauts uh, lock up here, uh, the first of, of three coming up here this week. Stripling... Guys, he's 0 for 4 against the Yankees. He was 0 for 2, uh, 0 and 2 against the Yankees uh, last season as well, too. I'm not a stripling guy. I'm really not a Montgomery guy. When I was looking at this game, I mean, I'm really zeroing in the offenses here and and which offense is going to get the better of these pitchers here. But, uh, you know, Jeff does bring up a good point. Uh, the, the Yankees do have do definitely have the better bullpen there. Romano was used quite a bit in some uh, high leverage situations in two of the three games against the Astros. So, yeah, it'll 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 uh, be interesting to see how these offenses uh, react to both these pitchers that are very very hittable. So, all right, so let's uh, lock our our guys in on this one. Uh, Jeff is, is taking a shot with Toronto plus 102 at home. And base winners on the other side. You guys are going head to head here. He's going Yankees at minus 12, uh, 112. I don't know. I think there should be a nice little food wager in this 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 bet. Every time we have guys on opposite sides or something, because you know food is such a major thing for me. So I don't know if you guys want to jump in on a, a little friendly Na- wager there. Nachos versus a cheesesteak. <laughs> I hate nachos. You don't like not? How can you not like nachos? Pick oh something. What, what did he but actually, Jeff, wait. if you win, you're getting a cheesesteak. Wait, but did he actually bet the Yankees or? He bet the Yankees, yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, good. Because I'm not going to lie. Some of the wins I have had on this show has been when March been on the other side. So hopefully <laughs> that'll continue. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. All right. We'll see if this bodes well for Jeff. All right. Cool. 